Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, from your favorite niche niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. All right. I hope you're sitting down because this is going to be so exciting today. I've pulled them out away from the surf. Your favorite podcast guest, my least favorite podcast guest. I'm just kidding. You guys all know I love him. It's love. Duran Frazier, Carlsbad, California, Duran. Oh, sorry, again, was that, I don't know if that was clap. a crowd. I don't know if it was a clap or if that was a surf in the background. Duran Frazier, landhub.com. How are you, my friend? I am doing excellent, Mark. How about you? Good, good. I, you know what? I feel badly I said you're my least favorite guest. That's okay. You, you, been, you know what? I kid because I love. I've been I've been hated on before. You're not the first person. No, it's, it's not it's not hate. <laughs> it's just jealousy. Yeah. You know, um, it's it, it's hard it's hard to do this stuff unscripted. It just came into my head. That's okay. That's okay. I totally understand, Mark. Yeah, you look a little tan, Mark. Have you been sunbathing outside there in Scottsdale? Yeah, it's 90 here now, probably. I'm getting my vitamin D. That's good. It's That's all good. good. For you. So, good. you know what? Before we got on the podcast, you were drinking a green sludge. Yeah. Can you tell everybody what the heck you're drinking? You know what? We've talked about it before in the past. I mean, it may have been a year or two ago, but I drink this special drink um, called Green Vibrance. Oh, it's actually not a drink. It's a powder. It's called Green Vibrance. Green, and green Vibrance. Yes, Green Vibrance. Uh, it's not cheap. But it's uh, a lot. It's it's about. I think it's two billion probiotics in every dose. So basically, it's a very healthy drink. It's like it's like eating lots and lots and lots of yogurt without the fat. Um, and wow. it's it's got all sorts of good stuff in it. But Green Vibrance is what it's called. You can pick it up at your local Trader Joe's or Whole Foods or um, anywhere that's super overpriced. Is it is it a meal replacement, or is it just a meal enhancement? I think it's a meal enhancement. Okay. So. Um, I drink it with, so I drink it with a little bit of uh, acai berry juice. I, there's, a, there's actually, I don't know, if, I don't think they're anywhere else, but there's this, there's this acai, uh, or it's called acai. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's called Sambazon, or I think it's called Sambazon. No, no, I've heard of it. Sure. So they have a store. They actually have a shop here in, uh, by the beach in Cardiff, little, little town called Cardiff by the sea in, in uh, North County, San Diego. And it's a, uh, it's, it's just a smoothie shop and it's the guys, the, the owners of Sambazon, that's their, that's their like flagship store. And, um. And there's a there's a bowl. It's a, it's actually a bowl. It's called the Rob Machado bowl. And Rob Machado's a, a a very well known surfer. And this bowl's got peanut butter in it. It is just it's an unbelievable wow um, acai bowl. But anyway, so I have some acai some some acai. Um, they actually sell it at Costco now, I think. Um, so I get some acai juice and okay. some and some peanut butter and some green vibrance and some ice and some, did I say peanut butter? Yes, yeah, yeah. No, why why are you doing all this? Because. I like to be healthy and because this morning, well, not, not because this morning my son woke up with 104, five fever, 4.5 fever. And, uh, and so I, I, I always remind myself that I need to stay healthy okay. and a, a healthy body means a healthy brain and, uh, and a healthy brain means, uh, you work more efficiently, you get more done. Let, and, let, let's, let's segue into your financial health. Yes. Because everybody wants to be financially healthy. Yes. So what are you doing right now? to make yourself more financially fit. I know uh, you're uh, eating well. I know you're exercising. Yeah. You're living the dream. Yes. So what are you doing to be more financially fit? I know you got a lot of projects going on. Yeah. I think, I think my, uh, my, uh, you know, obviously I've talked about my, the mining project. I'm, I'm thinking more long-term or bigger projects. Right. For, for me, the small one-off projects have been, uh, a little bit more difficult to work on because I like to think bigger. Um, so I've been doing that and then I've, I've worked on obviously land hub and the mining project are, are two of my focuses at the moment. Okay. What about buying and selling land right now? Not well, a focus? No, it's definitely a focus, but it's not a, I guess I would say a priority when I say that I'm still doing it and I'm, and I'm obviously every week I'm closing deals, Right. but my primary focus is obviously on the, the big picture of it. And to be honest with you, I, you know, as I talk about it, the, I'm, I wish that I could get in the software realm. I wish I could get things done faster. Um, and as we start scaling this 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 um, uh, this business model with LandHub, I, I, it'll solve a lot of your problems, a lot of our clients' problems. 
right. uh, and a lot of my problems. And, that, and that's really, at the end of the day, that's, that's I, I think it's going to change the way you and I do business. And land may end up, once Land Hub is done, land may become a number one priority because it'll be a lot easier for me to sell and market land. Right, right. No, I, I, I love the synergy between reserve land and Land Hub. Yeah, because it just feeds into each other so well. Yeah, but yeah, you know, software is tough. It's tough. Software, tough. It's a tough game, but it's ca it's capital intensive. It's it, it is capital intensive, and and uh, you know, at the moment, I'm still waiting for all your your customers to give me a phone call to uh, to 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 crowdfund my project. Um, so yeah, feel we're, free. We're looking to raise three hundred k. Yep, three hundred three hundred k uh, in in a small seed round. Uh, which, to be honest with you, we were talking. Uh, I was thinking about raising some more capital, but I don't think we need much more than that to get this thing uh, totally complete. We've got we've got full, a couple couple full time guys working on the project now. Um, some really talented. In fact, I would say probably some of the best uh, guys uh, that that I've ever seen working on this thing uh, from a development standpoint. And so I'm excited about that. Um, and from a from a visionary standpoint of where I want this to be, it's all coming together. Um, right. I just I just need to hire a couple of guys um, and and put them in place in terms of sort of the front end design and which is not terrible now but I really want to kind of go the more you know 3.0 web 3.0 like the Trulias the Redfins the you know uh, the Zillow dot coms there if you look at them it's funny they're all the same you just get right. you've got one bar across the screen the Airbnbs one bar across the screen you tell it what you want and everything populates so um, and that's where things are going and have gone. And so as I sort of trend in that direction, I still need to get, you got to work on when you're building a software that's kind of within a site, you got to work on both the front end and the back end. So it's a, it's a, it's kind of like two separate businesses. Sure. Sure. And, it, and in my case, it's a search platform for buyers and a sell platform for sellers. So I've got a platform, a software that sellers are going to utilize. And then a, of course, a front end that buyers will utilize. Right. Right. All right. So if you're an accredited investor, email us Yes. after the podcast, let us know if if you want a piece of land hub. Correct. You want to invest. That'd be, must, that, that's, that's exciting stuff. Yeah. It must be, must be accredited, but we think, uh, we think we'll be an acquisition target for a number of different companies in the real estate space. So that's exciting. Yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about list building via social media because okay. I'm, I'm working on that right now. Okay. But you, you know, before the podcast, you'd mentioned a really, really interesting topic, which we've never talked about. And I don't know how I feel about it. So tell me what's going on with why you like these tiny houses as a development play for our raw land. Okay. So as most people know, the dilemma with um, buying a property and developing it is generally you have zoning issues. So you'll have an R1 or residential. I mean, it's, it's, it's termed differently in all, in all states, but um, you'll have a residential a commercial property and and within those within those zonings are stipulations or guidelines of what you can and can't do. But generally speaking, a lot of those guidelines um, will have a square footage or a under a certain amount of square feet that 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 will allow you to do something um, and not and not have to get a permit. and And a lot of these properties, you'll find that you can build something under two hundred square feet without having to permit it. Well, that's wow. where the that's where these tiny houses come in. And if you guys haven't followed or watched it, I'm sure you've all seen it on the internet or read about it in the newspaper. Um, a lot of these guys, have, a lot of these companies have come out and they've built these, um, I think it's like fully contained houses that you literally just can either, you can build yourself, so they'll, they'll drop off the materials or they'll build it for you and just drop off, you know, drop off the tiny house. So they'll put it on a trailer and they drop it off to your property and off you go. And wow. they, they are fully contained, they, they can run off solar, um, it's really interesting what they're doing, but you don't deal with any permitting issues. So it's kind of one of those things where one, as a, as a, as a guy who kind of sometimes likes to get off the beaten path myself, I would, I'm totally interested in putting one of these together. And, and I obviously it would, I, I still have quite a few thousand acres. I want to, I want to buy, and by the way, Mark, I'm looking at another large acquisition, but you and I can talk about that in another podcast. Sure. Uh, um, but anyway, so, you know, the idea is to take these pieces of land and, and, and again, I'm always in my mind evolving or trying to think of a way to create more value. And there, this is another way, right? You could, you could almost pre-sell a property with this in place right. uh, at a, let's say, you know, five grand down, you know, 200, 300, 500 bucks a month, whatever it is. Well, how, how much is it going to cost to make a tiny house? Uh, I think you're looking at like, like, I want to say like 50 bucks or 60 bucks a square foot, but, but just, just, I want you to d internalize this for a moment. That's, that's 12 grand. 
right? That's 12 grand for a house. That's insane, right? And two, now I don't know about you, but if I'm me, if it was me and my wife with no kids, I 100% could live in a, a 1,200 square foot house. Wait a oh, second. Sorry. No, you're saying 200, 200 square feet. 200, 200, 200, that's what I mean. Sorry, 200 square foot house. Drain, you cannot live in a, in a 200 square foot home. Your car is bigger than 200 feet. Mark, I have a, I have a motor home with, with what, 120 square feet? No, it's bigger than that, isn't it? No, it's no, no, you're, no way. You're a big motor home? Yeah, it's not, it's not that big. You think it is, but it, there's not that much space in a motor home. So maybe I have, maybe I have, a, maybe I have 180 square. I can live with my two kids in 100 and, 120 square feet. So, and, and, that, and that includes like a bathroom. Correct. Bedrooms. Correct. Kitchen. Correct. Storage. Like no. Cupboards. No. no. Ah, yes, yes. Couple cupboards. Correct. So where do you, you where do you put your stuff in two hundred square feet? On the on the on the wall. So you still like don't forget the like, ground space. You still have some wall space, and you can utilize that. Um, these guys build it open, so you can actually build. They build these things two stories, Mark. Really okay. interesting. Really interesting. I mean, they're they're everywhere. If you look up, I think it's tinyhouses.com. Um, you know, a really cool place to look actually is on uh, Pinterest. Okay. Okay. Of- all right. All right. I'm sold then. Okay. I'm the kind of person that could live in a tiny house. Then what? I mean, why I am know. I buying this from you? Uh, why are you buying a tiny house? Am I house buying a me? land home package from you? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And, Correct. I'm, I'm, and you'll finance me? Correct. Okay. So, but now we're kind of getting outside that scope. Now I've got Dodd Frank and I've got RESPA issues, right? Because- yeah. I, I, but I, but now we, got, I, now we have a tenant, right? Before I, before I sold you that house, I moved to the Cayman Islands. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me ask you: Would you rent the house, or would you just sell it? No, maybe you'd rent it. Whatever the whatever the financial structure made more sense. I'm just I'm okay. Forget the forget the 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 direction of 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 what I what I would say is the exact way to go. Once you kind of come up with the idea of how to sell the house, right. I think whatever whatever financial strategy makes more sense. I'm not saying you're right. I, the lending lending side is a nightmare. I mean. The, the government doesn't want you or me or anybody else to bank money. They want Chase to bank the money. They want, you know, they want the Wells Fargo's to deal with, with lending. They don't want you and I to lend money. Right. That's just, that's just the way they are. Um, so I get it. It there. And I, and in fact, one of you and I actually need to do a podcast where we actually re- do a lot of research on the Dodd-Frank and see where, what are the rules? What are the stipulations? Yeah, I've, I've done the research. Land is exempt because there's no tenant. Okay. So land is exempt to Dodd-Frank and RESPA. Okay. So that's what makes, you know, we shouldn't even talk about it. It's, <laughs> it makes land that much more appealing Yeah. because you don't have to worry about it. And yet you're still getting that same cash flow. Okay. But I have researched it and it's exempt vacant land. Okay. So why don't you sell the land and they can buy the home from the dealer? Right. Or you start- so, you, so you partner with a dealer, Correct. tiny homes, let them worry about the financing aspect. Correct. And then you take your cut. Correct. For this, for making the sale. Correct. I don't know. It'd be interesting. It'd be interesting to see uh, yeah. how that plays out. But I definitely, th- I, I love the value add of it, though. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to pre-sell a piece of property with a tiny home, and, yeah. and have some different, uh, you know, floor plans made up. Yeah. Pre-sell that and then build it for somebody. And look, what there's not much risk at that point. Totally. And, totally. and do it. I think we should try it. You know, I've got all those lots in Texas. I've got all those lots in uh, in Northern Nevada. Those, those small yeah, but Northern ones. Nevada doesn't have power. I've got power. Yes, they have power, Mark. No. Humboldt River Ranches, baby. Oh, nice. So, so two, to the two and a half acre piece? I've got I've got several. I've got an acre and a half, two acre, two and a half acres, five acres, ten acres. I got it all. You want to do it? I'll do it with you. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's make. Let's. We should. You know, what we should do. We should do it, and we should video the whole thing. We should. You know what? That would be kind of cool. So we'll call it Frontier Reserve JV Little Little Home LLC. How about how about Reserve Frontier? Yeah. By the way, what do, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Reserve Frontier. <laughs> right. Frontier what Reserve. What? What so okay, so LLCs. I got a question from a coaching student. Yeah. And I don't, did we talk about this before? Do you do you feel like you have to have an LLC to do this business before you even make your offers? Before you even buy a piece of property? No. No. Yeah, I don't think so either. No. You know, yeah. every you know, but here's the thing. Everybody's threshold for liability is different, right? You and I, you and I are we it it, it kind of comes to like you know, what how 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 do you react toward risk? Are yeah, you Yeah, yeah, but we know a seller, he's making half a million dollars a year doing what we do full time. 
Yeah. Flipping land. It's yeah. all done in his name, personal name. He's and, been and, doing it for 15 lot, years. You're right. But there's a lot of liability involved in doing that. He's never been sued. I, you, but dude, it, it takes one lawsuit and he's done. I don't think so. I'm and telling, LLC is not going to protect him? 100%. Give no, him lot, it's not. It gives him a lot more protection. Oh, okay, fine. You're going to set up an LLC for every piece of property you buy? No, you have a thousand a LLCs. Why not have it makes no, no why, sense? Why every, why every why every why every property? Why not have all the properties in one LLC? Because then you're really then you're really liable. Okay. I, yeah. I, you know, then I, you get the domino. One property takes the whole thing down. I I don't know, dude. I don't know. Anyway, you know, that's but, a but you know, an, an attorney would tell you have a separate LLC for each deal. Yeah. But that's for like housing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. That's, there's more liability. And for what we do and the volume that we do it in. It makes absolutely no sense yep. to set up an, a different LLC for Correct. each deal or even for every 10 deals. Yeah. Just, I, I mean, look, how, we've been doing this a long time. I've never had an issue. You get a customer complaint, you deal with it. You don't go yep. to court. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be honest. I had one customer come back to me, just one. And what happened was the husband and wife got divorced. That's all she had was that piece of land. She wanted, she bought it at the top of the market in 2005 for me. And I, and I think this is 09 or 2010. She came back to me, please buy it back, buy it back. And I offered her. Market value, right? And it wasn't what she paid for it, which she wasn't happy about. Okay. And she, I, she started stalking me, and I said, "God, I mean, that was, I mean, she started not, like, I, it was just interesting stuff. It that stuff happens. You find one crazy one. That's just the, the way sure, it works. Sure, it's business. It's just the way it is. So anyway, uh, you know, and I, of course, you know, I have a lot of women stalking me too. But this is <laughs> just kidding. That's a joke. I'll, I'll laugh. Um, anyway, right. so I have, um, so so it, it was just it was one of those weird little bit sketchy situations for me, but that stuff happens. And I, but that's the only thing that's ever happened to me. I've never, so you, you, you know, if you looked at it from a, from a risk averse standpoint, if you're talking to two or three or four people that have had done a bunch of deals and never been sued, uh, then it, then it's different. now if you're a sketchy person, if you, if you're trying to slide by the rules and, and do sketchy things, then maybe I would do an LLC because you know what? <laughs> yeah. Just, just do, if you're within the rules and you're willing to be an ethical businessman and give the money back to some, or businesswoman and give the money back to somebody, you should be fine. Now, yeah, but you know, even an attorney will tell you an LLC is not, is not foolproof. If you really want better corporate protection, yeah. you should be an S corp or C corp, not an LLC. Cor correct. 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 Um, so, so, and again, just so, just so we can, uh, so let's reiterate the fact that Mark and I are not attorneys. Right. Uh, we, we have zero background, uh, in, in that world. Uh, I, I was, I was going to go to law school. So I have more background than Duran. Um, I was, I was, I go, took the LSAT. I, I was going to go to law school too until I dropped out of school my sophomore year in college. Oh. Um, so <laughs> 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 to start my, to start my land business. Um, sure. so, uh, so yeah, I think that I, you know, again, every single person, you know, there's, there's a couple of different websites that we've talked about in our tips of the week, which gosh, don't even put me on the spot yet. Cause I have no clue what mine is, but but there's Rocket Lawyer, there's Legal Zoom, there's right. lawyers that will answer your questions for 39 bucks a month. In fact, Mark and I are probably going to go in and make negotiate with Legal Zoom or Rocket Lawyer to get those get those cheaper. So yeah, that Duran, our, by the way, I found a guy on Fiverr.com yep, yep. that will answer for, one legal question for five dollars. Wow, he must be cranking. He must be doing a lot of good. He, lot you know, he, he's cranking it. He, it's a nine day turnaround. Wow. So if you need it right away, this isn't the guy to go to. But if you're, you know, if you got nine days, that's, yeah. a lot, that's huge savings. That's hundreds of dollars of savings. That is pretty crazy. That yeah. is pretty crazy. That That is a very special way to go. I mean, if you're cheap, that's a great way to go. Fiverr.com. Fiverr.com. I, I, I mean, again, there's and, – and there's also, you know, uh, what's what's that other website we've talked about? Elance. The, Elance, Elance Odesk. Odesk. Have you, I, tried, have you tried peopleperhour.com? I have not. I've, I've had – okay success it's more it's more uh it's more great britain based yeah but elance, i i, I, I tried some bought, stuff there elance bought odesk you know that right i did not know that when they elance, did that about six months ago elance acquired odesk but what's interesting about odesk is i've never to this day had success at odesk i've hired 40 people on there i've only had success at odesk i've never had success on elance that's so funny that's really funny how many I've people never, did you hire? I've hired so many people on, on, on Odesk. For what? All sorts of admin stuff, virtual assistants, everything. Really? And it could be that you're- You know what it is? I know, I know what the problem is. You're not paying them. You, you're looking- Look, in any project, you get to pick three. You can pick two of the three, right? Yeah. You get to pick the price 
quality or speed. Yep. If you want, if you don't want to pay much and you want them to do it right away, which I know you like yeah. things done right away. Yeah. You're not going to get quality. Yeah, you're right. If you want quality and you want them to do it right away, you got to pay. Then you don't get to pick the price. Yeah. So I, I typically live with the, uh, the compromise. I'll pick price and I'll pick quality, but it'll take forever. And I'll, and I'll live with that compromise. Hmm. You think I'm wrong? Uh, a little bit. That's okay. What would you pick? Quality uh, and speed and pay? Yeah. I, and I actually, funny enough, I, I, I will look for three middle of the road people, meaning pay. I look at their hours on Odesk, their feedback on Odesk. Dude, I don't and, want middle of the road. I want A players. No, no, no. When I say that middle of the road, I'm talking about the price wise. But I find that the A players that I have the best feedback. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Okay. Yeah, then why are, why are you going through so many people? I don't I don't know. That's what tri- again. It could just be luck of the draw. So yeah, it could be. Anyway. All right. So let's talk about building your list. Yep. Right. So in uh, in the investors toolkit, more buyers than you can handle. I talk about extensively why I'm such a big proponent now of not necessarily having a website, and more importantly, having a landing page. Right. And start yep. having relationships with prospects. Yeah. So I've been going through some training on social media and uh, it's really interesting. So what I've found is that I've been doing social media all wrong. And uh, the best way to build your list with social media is to do promotions. So that's what I'm going to start doing. What do you think? Huh. You're giving me a w- weird look. No, I, I like it. I like it. Um, I, I, I just want you to keep going. I'm, I'm getting, I, you know, you, I learned a lot from you on these, on these podcasts. So I just keep, don't, don't stop. Don't stop. Okay. Don't stop. So this, so, okay. So this is what's happening on say, let's face say Facebook, right? You, I'm competing with your sister's kids, with your mom's cat, yeah, with your friend's funny videos, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. the only way to compete with that, to get your attention and your newsfeed is to have something that's more interesting than those things, right? So what yeah. I've been doing this whole time is making those coffee talk videos and putting it up on my land geek page. Well, you got to be really super interested in learning about this business to click on my face to listen to my two minute video. You right? are a you are a geek. Dude. I am so a geek, but I'm not that interesting. I'm not that engaging. You could argue um, informative, yeah. But to compete with your sister's pictures of her kids, I've got to be more than informative, right? Yeah, I've got to be. I've got. I've got. To, I've got to do some kind of fun contest. So what people typically do, or companies will do, is they'll do okay, you know, in ex- they'll do ethical bribes. So in exchange for your name and email address, so that we can give you this valuable information, we're going to give you an iPad, right? Hmm. And you run those types of promotions and people get tons of it. So a great example of this was for March Madness was Quicken Loans, the billion dollar contest. It was a, it was the ultimate PR home run of home runs for this year. So I think they had a million people sign up for those, that March Madness bracket uh-huh. to win a billion dollars and, you know, Warren Buffett sponsoring it. And within like the first week, everyone was out. But you know why? a million people sign up. You know why? Because Warren Buffett paid the team a hundred, a hundred and fifty thousand each player for the team to, <laughs> for that number one seed to lose. You think so? That, oh, I already guarantee it, dude. I guarantee it. Oh my it. god, the conspiracy theory. <laughs> but, but you know, Actually, I'm, funny, I'm glad the podcast funny. is so small. <laughs> that's that. You know, Warren Buffett's attorneys could easily bury us tomorrow. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh man, it's funny. We're, we're gonna have to have a disclaimer. Exactly right. No, everything I say is mostly a joke. So please don't. <laughs> uh, but no, that's no. I mean that that is true. It's all marketing. I mean, look, the, the it's chance brilliant. it was brilliant. Oh, uh, amazing, amazing. And now I don't know how much Warren Buffett brought a lot more attention than uh, than Quicken Loans. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think I think they did really well with it. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they did. So yeah, that, that you're right. It's all about marketing. You know, funny, funny enough, Mark and I, 
um, we, we learned, we took our marketing class was doing our business, right? It was like learning how to sell land on the internet. That right. was the way we learned how to market. We didn't take it from a marketing class. You can't teach what we, what we learned because we were doing it. We were making it happen. We were the ones evolving the, the, the business of buying and selling land on the internet. So, so it's it, looking back, you know, it's now, and now it's evolved to a point where, like you said, you're, you're not competing for web space or for, or, or for traffic on page one of Google, which you, you are. You're, we're more competing for visual space. We're looking looking at us is the is the way you're going to click to us and learn more about us or what we're doing. Right. And to, to do that is such a challenge. Like yeah, you your, to, your attention is the most valuable commodity now. Yeah, yeah. There's so many things competing for it. Correct. So Correct. in order to, to capture that attention, you've got you've got to be outstanding now. Yeah. And it's got to be something pretty creative, pretty engaging, very informative, very valuable for somebody then to give up those credentials. Yep, and I, I don't know if you, I don't know if, it, all, all the listeners here, I want you guys to go do something. I want you to go to like a Yahoo website and I want you to go click on something, like a page, like a news page. All right, and I'm, gonna do, the, I'm gonna do it right now. Okay, and on the news page, I want you to, I want you to scroll down to, you know, uh, you know let's see here, like I, I just clicked on the, the mud, uh, I, it's something about the mud slide, obviously that, that, uh, that's been going on for a while here, but, uh, Something on that Washington Mud slide, but if you slide down, you'll see that there are blocks on the right side. Okay, videos for you. Uh, oh, I, top, oh, I block all that stuff. Top stories. Okay, but it, but now what they're doing is in a story, in a story, they're having stuff scroll on the bottom, like, and they're not, they're nothing to do with Yahoo. Um, they're basically getting paid for a click. But they're sending you two of these obscure stories. Like you'll see a picture of a girl with like perfect abs or a, another, a, a woman with big boobs or a man with crazy muscles that are falling down. And, and it'll say something brief, but it instantly catches your attention. You want to click it because you want to be like, what, what are they? And they'll say something that, that when you get to that, that next step, right. you'll, realize, you'll realize that, 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 that the place that they're sending you to isn't some, sometimes isn't always a viable website. Like, and when I say that, it doesn't mean that, that they're, that they're uh, you know, virus, virus contained websites, but they just have information or sites that are trying to get you to go there. And then from that site, they're trying to get you to click on something to buy something. So it's so, and then they'll put an ad up. Like if it's a muscle guys website, they'll like GNC will have an ad and they'll want you to click that ad on GNC. And so it's just so the internet is so stinking interesting to me because yeah. Because it's as such, a, they have it now down. They have enough data from each one of us on the globe that's, that search the internet. They have us down and they know what each one of us want to see, right? And, you, you know, it goes back to like, if you're searching for a book on Amazon and then you go to another site that's not Amazon and all of a sudden you're like, holy crap, I, how do they know on, on you know, Google.com right. I was searching for that book and it's because they track you through cookies. Yeah. They know. And you got to clear your cash and your cookies and your internet. So people, it's always good. That, that's to, called that's called retargeting. Correct. Yeah, there's correct. companies that'll do that for you for a monthly fee. Mm -hmm. I think it's creepy. It's very creepy, but but it's the nature of advertising, and it works. It, and it it isn't. You know, look. Let's be honest. Like even with kids, I mean, they're branding my kid from Nickelodeon Junior. They're branding my child, and and it's it's really a bummer. But how else do these people like Nickelodeon stay in business without having an advertiser pay them? There'd right. be no TV without advertisers. No, so it, it's just a system. And as we all go, ah, it's terrible how it is. And it is. It's a bummer that my kid, you know, he knows that, that Tide is the only detergent he'll ever use when he gets older because it's, uh, it's on Nick Jr. almost every day. And right. so, you know, my kid will know exactly what Tide is by the time he's 10 and he'll never do a, you know, an ounce of laundry. So, sure, sure. Um, so it, to me, it's just very intriguing on, on how, how people market. But going back to what you're saying, Mark, you're 100% right. It's, it's, it's competing. Uh, it's, you know, we're competing for eyeballs and it's, it's a challenge. Right. So next podcast, maybe I'll, I'll talk about my results. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm working with a company that's going to help me do this, but I'll let you guys know how it goes. All right. So Duran, I love yep. doing this to you. Nope. You have no idea what your, your, your tip of the week is going to be. Do you? Uh, I do. You do already? That's amazing. Nope. I, I'm just kidding. I don't have a clue. Come on. What is it? Okay. Um, I am, uh, I'm a guy, let me see here. You know what? Uh, that's not that I take that back. I don't know. I actually thought I had one. I just went to the site and it's not the site I wanted. So you go, Mark, what's your tip of the week? My tip of the week. Um, well, since we were talking about legal stuff, have we talked about 
uslegalforms.com yet? Um, you know what? I don't think we have. Okay, so uslegalforms.com is a great place to get, of all things, legal forms, real estate forms. Um, you can get them from your state. You can also set up your LLCs here. It, I think they compete with LegalZoom, Deeds.com. Okay. Uh, I, they, it's not like Rocket Lawyer, so I don't think you get actual advice here. Okay. But you can get very popular legal forms. So that is going to be my tip of the week. Mark, I am I am at a loss for words, dude. I don't even know. You want, you want me to give you your tip of the week? Yeah, please. This would be the first. This, show, this is this is historical, folks. I've never asked for help for a tip of the week, but I'm asking Mark for his help for tip of the week. All right, go ahead, Mark. So this is a site that I I like to check every morning, and I just find this stuff interesting. It's kind of geeky, but can really help with a lot of different things, especially with technology. And it is lifehacker.com, the website lifehacker.com. And I'm just looking at popular stories right now. And here's just some examples. What, reach, what research tells us about the most successful relationships? Microsoft Office is finally on the iPad. The picture-perfect Apple app developer's workspace. How to return to running after an injury. Productivity 101, a primer to the getting things done philosophy. Uh, so it's kind of that it's it's kind of cool. It's kind of that kind of stuff. Have you ever okay. checked out Life Hacker? No, I have. I just did right now. That's that's awesome. Um, in fact, that's the best tip of the week I've ever had. Come on, come on. That was a good one. I like that. You like that? that All right. One. You you gonna come back next week? In uh, you know what? You Mark, I got a real bit. I got a real busy April. But um, I, I you know what I might do though. We might for the listeners and for some of the uh, people that want to view it. Um, I'm, I'm actually interested in potentially doing, uh, an event where we, we could sort of every day YouTube us building this tiny house in, uh, in Nevada. I'm going to be in, in Nevada for a good portion of April, um, or, or a couple weeks in April. So maybe we start looking at putting together a tiny house on a property. Yeah. I'll virtually be there for you. Okay. That doesn't help. We want to use that, but I'm not going to go there. Wow. But, uh, all right. You know where we will be though? In on May? May 30th and 31st. Vegas, baby, Vegas. Wow. The Land Geek Seminar, two days, May 30th, 31st. Don't be scared. Um, we are very close to booking the venue, and it's going to be very intensive, and Duran is going to be there, right? I'll be, I'll be there, folks. And I don't know if you'll want to hear me speak, because obviously you're probably already sick of hearing me today on the podcast, but I will be there to talk about just about my life and about my journey in the land business how I got to where I, where I am today. And I'm sure Marco did the same. Uh, no, I'm going to do even more than that. I mean, I'm going to talk about everything that we talk about in the investors toolkit, but to a much deeper level, Q and a mindset strategies, networking strategies or networking sessions. It's going to be amazing. Don't miss it. May 30th, 31st, save the date. Call the office, by the way, at, um, 888-620-6742 and let us know your schedule because we're, we're reserving a block of rooms at a special rate. We want to make sure everybody can get a room. So 888-620-6742 or email the office, uh, mark at thelandgeek.com. No worries. And then uh, look, go to reserveland.com. Check out some of Duran's raw land. Advertise at landhub.com. Duran doesn't have anything you want. Go to FrontierPropertiesUSA.com. But of course, always check out your favorite real estate website, www.TheLandGeek.com and opt in. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative, engaging, entertaining website delivered each week to your email inbox. Duran Frazier, Living the Dream in Carlsbad. Thanks again. Thank you, sir. And uh, we'll see everybody next week. Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.